Wedding Supper Parables, Matthew 22, Luke 14. How they show us the inner court. The inner court, which you are looking at here. How they show the army, the king's house. The streets and lanes of the city, which you just saw. The buildings, the altar, the hedges. Okay, and here the three floors of the north and south chambers. How the wedding supper parable talks about everything you are looking at here. Very exciting. So these are the series of messages we are going to get to on the wedding supper parables of the inner court. Okay, as we look at the inner court and we look at the architecture of the inner court, um, one of the things we want to do as we set out to do this series was to focus on the parables and show you that clearly what Christ is talking about in many of the parables is the millennial temple, meaning the millennial temple is the great reward um, and it is the wedding supper. So. If you have followed the series and you had followed the blog posts, if you haven't, I encourage you to go back and, and watch those. It's not actually videos. They are blog posts on the website. Go to LelandJones.com. At the top, you'll see blog, and you'll see a series of um, blog posts on the inner court. And so now as we look at the structure of the inner court, we can see that in the wedding supper parables, we get clearly defined and understood architecture of the structure of the layout of the uh, inner court, the buildings of the inner court, the procedures of the inner court. So let's just take a look real quick and uh, go over the wedding supper parables. Now, as we had showed you in the uh, previous series, the main parables of the wedding supper is Matthew 22 and Luke 14. But we could see that through Luke, Luke 14, going really all the way to um, chapter 19, um, we could see that the wedding supper had an underlying theme running throughout. So we show you before, I've uh, pulled out some props here um, because I can talk about these things, but if I show it to you, it has a greater impression. Um, we showed you how there was the oil, okay? So that the in the parable of the um, unjust servant, he went to the people and said, how much do you owe? And he, the, the person said, you know, so many measures of oil. Okay, so the oil, we found the oil to be a precise measurement to be that of the wedding supper. In um, Ezra chapter 7, he said so many cores of wheat. Now, this is not a core of wheat. This is um, a, probably a tenth, a tenth of a core of wheat. This is like an ephah, approximately. But this holds wheat. <laughs> and that's what I love about these old containers, is these hold um, wheat. They hold uh, wine or oil, okay? And this one also, they did make uh, wine. And when they made the wine, I show you the, the wine press inside. Uh, these are the containers that they would um, uh, store the wine in. So, now in the video, you can look at the wine containers, you can look at the oil containers, you can look at the wheat, and be reminded of what we talked about in the previous series, how in Ezra 7, it was the wedding supper, and we are getting the precise ingredients of the wedding supper in the uh, parables in Luke 15, 16, okay? But we want to really focus in on Matthew 22 and Luke 14 with the structure of the inner court here. I'm just saying that if you've followed, that's great. Some of what we'll, we're saying here will make more sense. All right. So uh, Matthew 22, uh, Jesus answered said to them, uh, again, in parables, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king or an anthropos man king, which made a marriage for his son. And he sent for the servants to call those that were bidden. Okay. So he goes to uh, invite, they uh, make light of it. Let's jump to verse 7. Then the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and he destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Okay, so this is the Lord of Hosts army going against Mystery Babylon. Okay, so the other thing you see in our props is we have the whole armor of God. <laughs> That's right. 
we have the whole armor of God here, guys. This is amazing. Uh, a couple things that uh, come up recently is first off, the breastplate of righteousness. Someone gave me this shirt and it's a comrades kind of uh, communist style shirt. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. I love that. So, uh, so I was given that and picture this here as our breastplate. Then we have the helmet, okay? And uh, here you have the old helmets, okay? I mean, look at this. This is just great stuff. Okay, uh, helmet of salvation, all right? The sword of the spirit, the shields of faith. I found these, uh, these look like shields. They're covers for uh, barrels or something, but they're the shields of faith, the sword of the spirit, okay? Amen? <laughs> So he sent forth his armies, and he destroyed their city, okay? Uh, then we have the loins, girt about with truth, and it's our belt, okay? And the feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. That, of course, we have our combat boots. <laughs> so somebody gave me these. Uh, some of them, some of the things you see here, I found... Uh, in in the uh, in the basement, amazing. So this allows us to see that there is a war. Okay, there is a war of the armies uh, taking place. So the king heard he was wroth. He sent forth his armies. Now let's connect this real quick while we're here to Luke 14. It's also the wedding supper parable, but um, it's the king that goes to make war. So in Luke 14 and verse 31. Or what king makes war against another king, sits down first and consults where they able with 10,000 to meet those that comes against him with 20,000. Now the context here of Luke 14, which we'll clearly see, is the wedding supper. So this is the same king and the same war that it's talked about here in Matthew 22. And this, of course, is the fifth trumpet army, the locust army, and the war of the Lord of Hosts army against the locust army. So the Lord of Hosts army is the sixth trumpet army. Okay, so then, um, and he said to his servants, the, um, the wedding is ready, but those which were bidden were not worthy. Okay, they didn't take it serious. Verse nine, therefore go into the highways and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. Okay, now we're getting highways, all right? And we're getting, now we're getting part of the architecture and structure of the inner court, as you'll see. All right, all uh, right. And he, and he said, all right, let's go to verse 12. And he said unto him, now the king, okay, verse 11, when the king came to see the, those sitting down, he saw a man which had not the wedding garment. Okay, so here you can see where we have a white shirt representing the wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how came you not with the wedding garment? And the man was speechless. The king said to his servants, bind him and cast him into outer darkness. Now, the garment is the inner court in the inner court you have to have your wedding supper garments on okay in order to enter the inner court okay you have different garments that are in the outer court but in the inner court you have wedding supper garments so that's what he's talking about and we'll look at that in uh in ezekiel but then this is uh also part of the architecture we see in luke 14. so in luke 14 what we have is we have some of the buildings and some of the structures and more details, okay? And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden and marked how close they were in the chief rooms, saying to them, when you are bidding to the wedding, sit now down in the highest room, more honorable than, uh, than bidden of you. But he bade him to come and say to them, Give this man your place and you begin with shame to go to the lowest room. But when you are bidden, go sit down in the lowest room and when you make... Uh, and he bid you come, he said, friend, go up higher than you shall worship in the presence of them that sit down with you. So we're getting uh, stories. There's, there's a upper floor, middle floor, and lower floor. Okay, whosoever exalts himself shall be abased. Whosoever humbles himself shall, shall be exalted. So we'll look at this in a second. But there you can clearly see uh, the structures of buildings being part of the focus of the parable. All right, and the parable continues. All right, but let's look at 
uh, verse 21, then the master of the house being angry said to the servant, go quickly into the streets, the lanes of the city, bring forth the poor, the maimed, the blind, the halt. Okay, so now again, we're getting more architecture of the streets, the lanes of the city. We'll show you all this, okay, once we look at the inner court, but we're going through the parable so you can see them. And the Lord said to the servant, go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house will be filled. Okay, highways, hedges. Again, we'll look at the words in the Greek and we'll show you where they are in the structure of the inner court. Okay, the parable actually continues with those, uh, what is the qualifications of the wedding supper? Um, if any man will come to me and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brothers, his sisters, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whosoever does not bear up his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower? Okay, we're still in the wedding supper. What's the tower? It's the king's house, which we will show you. Sits now down first and counts the cost, whether he is sufficient to finish it. Okay, verse 31, we read it earlier. Or what king goes to make war against another king, sits now first and consults whether he's able to... Okay, so this is the war of the wedding supper in Matthew 22, that when the king was hurt, he's wroth, he sent his armies and destroyed their city. That's why we have the whole armor of God here displayed. So again, we have the tower, uh, we have here the hedges, okay? We have uh, the garment, we have all the detail and structure of the inner court. All right, now remember this structure of the temple complex where we have the outer court area around here, and then here is the inner court. So in this view, I want to give you this view of the inner court. So it's, you know, essentially the gates, their inner court gates. There's an, um, the altar is here. This is the court around the altar. This is the temple. This is the north chamber, south chamber. This is the king's house and scribe's chamber on the left and the right of the king's house. Now, with that in mind, here's a view where which we focus just on the inner court. Now, of course, you can see there are many uh, details of what we're describing, and that's what we're going to discuss here now, is the fulfillment of the wedding supper parables in the inner court area, which you can see here. So let's uh, zoom in and begin to look at... Um, what Ezekiel is talking about, okay? So you, if you remember, it said, uh, go into the hedges. Now what the hedges are, is the hedges are the hedges of the sheepfold. So there are kind of walls, if you were, that enclose the area of the inner court. They're here connecting the gates. And then they're here, uh, call, it's called a hedge wall, okay, that runs along here. You can see wall hedge, okay? And these, these are important for us, very significant in a, in a number of ways. First off, we can see it in the wedding supper parable. But secondly, within the layout of the inner court, it's important that you understand why it is we put these kind of puzzle pieces together the way that we have. So let us take a look at what we could see in Matthew 22 and Luke 14 with the description of the uh, wedding supper parables and how they are clearly talking about the inner court. Here you can see it says the hedge wall, like we talked about, go into the hedges, go into the lanes of the city so that there is a road a walk as ezekiel calls it covered with pillars all right and there are places to boil and bake um the the um sacrifices okay by here and then the place by which the priests eat okay is uh this whole entire building is called the North Chamber. And there is another building called the South Chamber that is basically identical in its layout. We also have the lanes of the city. You got the place where the priests eat, okay? And you'll notice what we're stating here. It has upper, middle, and lower rooms. That's what we looked at there. 
those that you want, you know, don't go in the chiefest room or the highest room. Go to the lowest room. All right. That means there's multiple floors. And uh, again, in Ezekiel, it's called a hedge. So instead of using the word wall, he uses the word hedge. And the hedge is the hedge of the sheepfold. So that is in uh, Luke 42, verse 7. There was a hedge over against the chambers towards the outer court. Its length was 50 cubits. So it gives us this, um, the dimensions of this building, if you were, that's 100 cubits by 50 cubits. And then it says there's a wall of 50 cubits. So that's this wall here. Then this wall continues into what we call the scribe's chamber. And the scribe's chamber has a, a width to it of 50 cubits. All right. And its depth is 30 cubits. And it has a porch. So it's essentially occupying this space here. Okay. So, and the rich young ruler in the parable, he said, sell all you have, give to the poor, and you'll have treasure. Okay, so it's in the scribe's chamber, these buildings, the treasury, because the treasure in Greek is thesaurus. Okay, thesaurus. So that is, thesaurus is the scribe's chamber there. All right, and then remember how, which of you goes to build a tower? Well, the tower is the king's house. As you can see here, this is the king's house. And we have another kind of treasury or thesaurus, um, treasury scribe chamber building here, okay? So thus, it's, it's basically a call to, the wedding supper is a call to those that are in the priesthood of the inner court. Because he also said, where is your garment, right? Where is your garment? Um, and those garments, okay, we know are the requirement of the inner court. So that in the priesthood, in, in order to enter this whole inner court area, you would have to have um, linen garments. And then when you leave the inner court, you take those garments off and you leave them in these buildings here. The north chamber here and the south chamber here. So it says that specifically, okay? And so this is giving us, you know, uh, clearly the details of the inner court, all right? And we have also the singer's chambers here. Singer's chambers, we uh, relate to the instruments of Psalm 150. Singer's chamber with the psaltery, the harp, the tambourine, strings, the pipe or organ, and cymbals, all right? And Ezekiel says the inner gate where the singer's chambers were in the inner court, the one facing south and one facing north. Okay, so one is uh, facing north and one is facing south. That's these buildings here. And then there's those that are the chambers facing south of the priests, the keepers of the charge of the temple. And here are the keepers of the altar. Okay, because he says, you know, there, I have slayed my oxen. Okay, that's the those the altar is in the center. That means that, that the oxen has been slain as a um, as part of the uh, sacrifices. Okay, now I realize you guys don't like my hand drawn sketches, and you like the 3D model, so let's use it. So here, of course, you could see the inner court uh, just as if you were to go into the uh, 3D model, and to recap the design of what we are describing is this type of wall structure here. This is the hedge uh, enclosing the inner court. And then there's another one over here, 50 cubits. Then we have these buildings. Okay, so here uh, you see these buildings. These are the treasury, uh, the scribe's chamber. And then we have the south chamber here and the north chamber which, as we said, have three levels. So here you see the three floors of the north chamber and south chamber have the same architecture. Uh, so this is what they look like as we uh, look down, that there are three floors or three levels that Christ said. That go when you go or bid to the feast, and the feast is in the north chamber where the kings uh, and priests you know, have the wedding supper, all right, go not to the chiefest room, the highest room, 
He said, go to the lowest room, all right? And here's another amazing view that we can take. And what we're looking at now is we're looking at the view of the lanes of the city. Okay, so this is a porch covered uh, walkway, essentially, that is we're facing towards the east, which is leading to the building. But again, you can see the uh, three floors and the places here, it says the places where they boiled the sacrifices. And so now to define everything, so we're very clear, the streets and the lanes of the city. So this is a road and this passes through this building. It goes all the way through. And then we have the hedges. And then we have he who builds a tower. That's the king's house here. So you can clearly see the architectural elements of the millennial temple and the surrounding buildings and architecture are clearly what the wedding supper is talking about. It is referring to inner court believers, those that are serving the king, those that have given all to follow him to make the wedding supper. Go into the streets and lanes of the city, the hedges, okay? Who builds a tower? Okay, don't go into the chiefest room. Go to the lowest room. All of these are clearly design elements that we can see in the Ezekiel temple. So I almost forgot the great boiling pot. Isn't this amazing? Doesn't it just look exactly like the model in the 3D? This is a huge boiling pot. I bet you don't have a pot like this in your kitchen. <laughs> They had the places for the boiling. So I almost forgot about that until I read the notes. But what have we learned? We learned the wedding supper is going on. Measure the wine. Uh, touch not the wine or the oil. Okay. Uh, measure the wheat. Okay. Because the offerings are ongoing. The feast is ongoing. Okay. Now we learned in this that the architecture of the inner court is clearly talking about a specific people. A, spe a specific people serving as priests in the inner court. Okay, that's, that's what we can see. We can see there's a war. You can see we have uh, displayed the whole armor of God, the breastplate, the helmet of salvation, the loins girt with truth, the shields of faith, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and the sword of the Spirit. Amen? So, it is the war, okay, the Lord of hosts army, they're uh, fighting from the war. And then from the wedding supper, they uh, go out and, and follow uh, the lamb on the white horse. Okay, so that is the war. All right, it is already ongoing. Okay, but uh, it is those that have this privilege of this inner court worship uh, of serving, okay, the king. And the temple is open in heaven. Okay, so that is what we're saying. The wedding supper is ongoing. All right, so we could see the hedges, uh, the hedges, uh, the lanes of the city. We could see the levels, okay, the chiefest room, the lowest room. All of these, all right, the king's house, the tower, all of these are specific buildings and architectural design elements of the Millennial Temple. I hope you are clear on that. Uh, we will have further, of course, on this series, but this one is very exciting because, yes, we have nice ancient props <laughs> of the way people did things 100 years ago, but even unto the time of the Lord. Amen. So uh, we'll have more on this, guys. We'll have more on uh, the, the 3D model temple and parables. So it's, we're, we're hoping that the story of the parables as you go them, and I encourage you to read them, study, and go back over the previous messages where we had discussed the shopping list, okay, the grocery list, if you were, of the wedding supper of the land where we saw these things. We see the garment. Someone was at the feast. Where is your garment? Where's your wedding garment? And he was speechless. 
That's because it's inner court, and the inner court you have to have on your garment. Okay? Amen? So, uh, guys, thanks for watching. Um, the notes that we went over in the sketch, all right, that's in our all chambers notes. So if you go lelandjones.com, and then you go to course five, you'll see that's the 3D temple series. And there's three documents there. Um, I encourage you to download uh, all of those and get them. But the one we talked about today, all right, is, is in the inner court, in the structure of the inner court, how it meets the altar, okay, uh, the chamber of the altar, the singer's chambers. We know that the wedding supper is also Luke 15 uh, with the instruments in the worship, okay, uh, the chorus and the symphonia, all right. And then these are all previous messages. You don't know what we're talking about. You got to go and go to the blog and you'll see we have blog posted all of this here. And the places of the boiling. <laughs> so guys, this is amazing. Uh, I'm so uh, happy. I'm so blessed to finally be doing this series. It's been content I have had for years uh, waiting for the opportunity to have uh, a better representation than I can do hand-drawn. And that is the temple in 3D. So, uh, hope you've been following along. Continue. We will have more, okay, on the temple, the complex. We haven't even got to all the buildings. This is just overview of the structure. We're talking about the parables. But in upcoming videos, in upcoming messages, we will get to the actual buildings, all right, and get to more of them besides the gates. We did the gates, the sundial and the, those worshiping there but we can see even with the last video how this relates to those worshiping there because that's what christ's talking about bring in the poor of the main the blind the halt okay that my house may be filled so guys a voice came from the throne saying praise all god all you his servants that fear his name both small and great 